Hey my gorgeous babes and babettes. Today we're shooting in my kitchen cause I just came back from the store and I just wanna pack some stuff up and I was gonna go downstairs or like upstairs or somewhere green to shoot because it's such a beautiful sunny day. And I just decided to go to the store and get some stuff. Like very, very few things though. So I don't know if the camera is gonna follow me cause it usually does. <laughs> Guys, the day I learned how to use my camera. Oh, hey, follow me. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. I'll just unpack here. So I don't actually have a content idea, but I have like a picture of what I want this video to be. And I'm just going to be telling you guys about why I think moving abroad was one of the best decisions of my life. And obviously, for you guys who followed me for a long time, it takes a lot for me to say this. Considering that you've seen me go through the downest of downs and the uppest of ups. You know, we've gone through milestones together, we've gone through, we've shed tears together right on this channel. But today I'm gonna to tell you guys why I think this has genuinely been, like if I had to do it all over again, there's, I mean like maybe just a few tweaks here and there, but I would do it exactly the same way. Sorry, um, I am a girl from Botswana. I did my entire, you know, from primary school, from preschool until um, be right before university, I was in Botswana. I did my whole schooling there and I became very comfortable in who I am. I was a homebody. I never wanted to leave the house. My mom would be like, let's just go to the shops and I'd never want to go anywhere. I was not very self-aware. I didn't know what I liked or didn't like. I didn't know how to like dress myself, how to take care of myself, how to look my best. I was just very comfortable. I was comfortable in the sense that everybody back home, or at least in my circle, pretty much looked the same, did the same things. And my best friend and I, best friend when I was back home, we were so okay just being, you know, like steady, steady, like just not ever changing or evolving. We were both very awkward people who just loved to laugh and it was so fun. But what it was, was it was a bubble. And the moment I got on that plane, I came to the UK on the 22nd of September, 2022, or was it the 23rd of September, 2022? The moment I got on that plane, our entire bubble burst and that was basically just the end of an era being in a little tiny you know comfortable space where i never really realized how much my mom did for me but i think to give you guys an insight I'm, i was an only child throughout my entire life and okay, coming to live alone in a foreign country having absolutely no friends no family nothing you realize how much privilege you had to have every single thing at the tip of your fingers. I thought that when I left my mom's house to go live in the Marwabula boarding house, that basically meant that I was an independent girly. Like I knew, I knew what independence was and I was basically ready to take charge of the entire world. <sighs> But this is a girl who, let me tell you something about the map boarding house. They cook for you breakfast, lunch, supper, and even midnight snacks. Yes. Um, Maripula is an entire ecosystem. We have like a diner, like calf. We call it calf because it's the cafeteria. We have a field. We have a gym, which sometimes it's open, sometimes is it? No, we had gym. Did we have a gym? We had gym societies where the school would take us to a gym like Jack's gym. I remember I went to we, I went to Jack's gym to do spinning with some map girls. Like it was insane. But at that time I thought I was being Miss Independent. I don't live with mommy. No, our boarding master was our mommy because Miss Ano, before you leave your house, she'd be like, where are you going? Whenever you go do, if you're gonna sneak out with somebody's son in the boarding house, Miss Ano is gonna be like, oh, with binoculars right on you being like, hey, wah guy. 
and stuff like that so absolutely no living in a boarding house for sixth form was not the taste of independence that i thought it was actually it might have been ever so slightly more damaging because we were spoiled rats you should <laughs> I can't believe I said that, but it is the fact. I'm sorry. I loved everybody at the boarding house, but the spoilage. Guys, they really spoiled. Oh, okay, yeah, to the T. To the T. Because, um, I don't know why I'm been talking and I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Come on, get it together. So, I was saying, let me show you guys what I bought, actually. I got fruits. Um, I get a lot of food. So these are peaches. I got a couple of peaches. And what are these? I think these are plums. I got them both from Sainsbury. I shot my fruits at Sainsbury. Maloba, I got fruits at Little, which were okay. Let me tell you, the little fruits were fine. But let me show you. My fruits never, ever, ever, ever last a week. But these are the fruits that I bought from Little last week. Look at how full they are. It just should tell you that something must be off. Because I ate one of these and it, it was as if I ate a pill of vitamin C. It was like I ate vitamin C directly. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those fruits, but I guess I'll eat them when it gets really, really, really tough. I digress. Um, so Marapula did influence a lot of change in me. In, but it was, I think... It was minuscule, it was tiny, because I was still around like-minded people, you know, like most of the people in the boarding house were just like me, they were top achievers who came from, you know, a le not as privileged background, and they, you know, they were brought there by the government or by Marwapula itself, and we we're just sharing the same experience. So a lot of my friends right now who I was in the boarding house with went to universities in the north, which means the Manchester, the Leeds, the Birmingham, and the Newcastle. I came to London, which is as isolated as a Motswana can get. Because firstly, there's very few of us just in my dia in my circumference. And yeah. So coming here, firstly, like I said, the taste of independence really it expands you so much as a person. I didn't know that you have to replace your toilet paper this often. <laughs> but now I know. <laughs> so I definitely know how to budget much better. First year, I instantly got a job, but it was because I really grew my passion for social media. And it, I don't want to say it was easy for me to get a job, but with, you know, with the media that I have, with the support you guys give me and how enthusiastic you are when you see my videos, I think that was the first thing that my employers noticed that I'm able to connect with people just through a screen. And that must really mean there's something unique about me. So I really got to delve deeper and explore who I am through Nobody really ever pitching in into, oh, princess, do this, do that, do that. It was like, no, I need to figure stuff out for myself, you know? So that amount of self-awareness and independence came from living an international life. Furthermore, I think, guys, is this camera actually on me? Because whole time, imagine I want to upload this and whole time I'm like, cut, like, right, y'all. That'll be super scary. But um, another thing is I also, oh, I got prunes. Pitted prunes, guys. Actually, hey, you know when I saw this in the store, I thought it was dates. So it, I, I know the people who love dates. My best friend Lena loves dates, but me, I feel like that just so sweet. Why are those things sweet like that? Yo, no, I can't. I'm so sorry. They're too, too sweet. It's a bit too much. So then I just bought these the other day. I was like, come, but you know prunes are not dates. And I was like, oh, prunes are like those gummy ones. And I was like, yeah, just get them and taste what they taste like. This is my third packet in like two days. Prunes are banging, okay. Um, okay, let's keep going. So another thing is just the social um, atmosphere or thing, expansion, social king, exposure, the social exposure. Um, it is no secret that in Botswana, you can go a month without seeing a white person. Let's be honest. You can go a month without seeing a white person. The only time you'll see an Asian is if you go to the Chinese store. The only time you'll see an Indian is probably the one Indian you go to school with. If, you are, if you're like me, because in high school, there were like two Indians that I knew because I went to school with them. So Botswana, especially if you live in Wichita like me, the lack of diversity is, there's no diversity. 
it's just the next black person and probably the light-skinned people are considered white people. <laughs> so, yeah, or the missionaries that knock at your door and they, <laughs> and they want to Jehovah's Witness you. So me coming here, I knew it in my mind that, okay, Tampa, you're going to be seeing other races more frequently, especially in London. London is crazy, crazy diverse. You'll have people our skin color and they have the curliest of hair. And you're like, you're not where I come from, but you kind of look like me. So I'm confused. So that exposure has really, it's made me very different, but not in a good or a bad way. It's just like, oh, like sometimes I'm just like, oh, it's as if I'm on television because that's where I see white people. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was really interesting. Um, learning how to be on my own. This is a weird one because when I was back home, I think I was more comfortable or I knew how to be more independent and more solo than I am here, which is very weird. Maybe because back home, I was comfortable knowing that my support system is at the tip of my fingers and I was like oh if I need someone I know how to easily access them so I'll just be comfortable not accessing them and I know they're still there like at the back of my mind but being here guys okay maybe it's dark let me go switch on the lights pa, 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 pa. is it better I think it's better but being here, you know that you don't have our support system. You have no family and your friends are the ones that you make them. You know, they're not the friends that you make. It's not like the same as when you were in secondary school with someone you sat together and you ended up being best friends. No, even in university, like you come into the lecture and then you leave. There's no, oh, we don't, there's like, unless you, you physically, emotionally, put yourself out there. Yeah, Shanice, you're gonna see drama. You're really just gonna be solo for a long time. Last time, I remember I was in, I was, this is, I live in Riz, I live in student halls. I was downstairs and I came across this girl, she came to me, she's like, wow, you're so beautiful. I was like, thanks, babe. And she was like, you know, it's so crazy. This is the first time I ever actually have a conversation with someone in our halls. I'm like, excuse me, there's over 500 people living in halls. How have you not communicated to anyone? And she's just like, yeah, like even her flatmates, because we live in flats, you get me? Like, you can come in the kitchen here. There can be two, three, four people. No one will say anything to the other person. It will just be hacha, 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 just like that and get out. So, like, it's a lot more normal to be so self-isolated in the UK as it is back home. I remember one time when I came back home during the summer from the UK, I guess maybe it rubbed off on me a little bit. I was walking in the streets and then I didn't say, like, Dumelang, eh, eh, Dumelang, eh, thing, uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you. I didn't do that with the person passing by me. And then I realized, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. I went back to them and I was like, hey, can I please ask a direction? And I was like, oh, I'm back home. I'm back home. <laughs> so there's that. Like, it's a very different cultural and social space that I'm still acclimatizing to. But I know that after the time that has passed, I'm definitely getting more and more used to it. Um, but I still sometimes remember that one quote that I read that said that, you know, in your lifetime, you should go and live or visit places like London or New York. But just don't let them change you. Don't. There was a way in which that it was phrased. I forgot how it was phrased, but it said, once in your lifetime, you should go live or visit places like London or New York. But make sure they don't. Like, like there's a thing that they do. Don't make sure they don't make you cold because they're very cold cities. Very true. So like sometimes I do have that fear. More fruits, guys. I don't know how many I've pulled out at this point, but as you can tell, I'm such a fruit girl. And then I also got my favorite topical mix, fruit and nuts. Ra ra ra! I can't wait to devour this while I'm watching Netflix. Um, yeah. So just what was it? What was I saying? I was like, more pitted prunes, devour. I was saying like sometimes with you, it's not like you're gonna notice that these, place, these places are making you cold, but it's like, you need to be aware. You need to be aware. 
I also love the financial freedom. That is not a secret. I talk about it all the time. The way in which you get jobs here is very different from how you get jobs back in Botswana. I remember I've only ever gotten one job in Botswana. It was a waitress. Oh, I'm lying too. I got two jobs in Botswana. I was a waitress in both of them. I was a waitress at Dross and I was also a waitress at Connor Couch super i wouldn't i think insightful i don't know i was gonna say fun but i was like was it really fun babe it was an insightful time to be alive because i was very young i think i was 16 or 17 right after no 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 say 16 i think i was 16 i was 16 right before starting sixth form so i i remember how i got those jobs i had to go directly at the place drop a cv kiki kaka with the manager and be like hey please if you're ever hiring please call me up and left which was okay which was great um i started working there i think two weeks later they called me and they're like come come work here and the way in which we're paid we're paid off commission which means that the number of sales of food that you make the percentage the a certain percentage i think it was like 2.7 is how much you're paid as um I almost said allowance as salary. So basically, I know that when you're a waitress in Botswana, you rely mostly on your tips. So I remember mostly I'd get like 100 bula tips at the end of the day. I'd end up with like 200 bula tips at the end of the day, which is like, it was nice. As a 16-year-old, that was like, for me, I was like, yeah, I know I'm balling. But at the same time, I had a business. I had Pierced by a Princess, which was doing really, really great. Um, so I was able to sustain myself and also just learn, you know, business, learn how to make money, learn how to manage money, even though I really wasn't, I wasn't saving any of it. I was really splurging it on myself and my family as I usually do. <laughs> um, coming here, getting a job is completely different. It is very rare that you go directly to the organization and say, hi, hire me. Cause I once tried it and ugh, didn't work out that well. You work through emails and applications and websites. Like, for example, there's there's a lot of websites. If I don't use them, though, because they confuse me. But there's a lot of websites where jobs are advertised and you apply through them. Like Target Jobs. I know there's one called Target Jobs. You guys probably have heard of all of these. Um, so you learn the system and what you enjoy the most about how you work is your, you, you, you're paid per hour. So I think even as a waitress, you are still paid per hour. You're not paid with respect to your commission, which I think is so great because it's a lot more stable. And, you know, if you want more money, just do more hours. So I think I loved that. I, cause I remember at Dross, I would work crazy hours. I'd leave Dross at midnight. My mom would have to come pick me cause I live in Mushiri. I'm working in Gabs. It was like not fun, but I wasn't even making that much money. So yeah, guys, I said quite a bit. I think maybe there'll be a part two to this video cause I really want to upload today. So, um, and I really don't know what I'm doing with my day, but I'm glad that I recorded something. I hope this video was kind of cute and you enjoyed it. Um, Obviously, there's so much more that I could talk about, but all I want to say is I'm a very different person and the 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 exposure that I've ex experienced through becoming an international student is one that there's literally no amount of money can buy. I am bigger business-wise, mind-wise, passion-wise. Oh, that one, that one is, is obviously have to... Um, it's different it's, it's an interesting one we'll get into it but i know my passions are are much wider is basically what i'm saying compared to back home where it was like oh i want to be a doctor i want to be a surgeon i remember everybody asking what you want i'm like i want to be an orthopedic surgeon and it's like oh like right now if i spoke to myself back in the sixth form or back in botswana i'd be like is that all is that all you want to do and that is that's what i'm asking you guys like somebody be like i want to be a pilot is that all is that all you want to do? And what? What more of your talents can you use? Can you apply? Are you creative? Have you ever tried to be creative? And these are the things that I've come to learn. I've come to learn that I'm very creative. I'm very interested in creating. I love being on a social platform. And I love being a social media personality. How many minutes has this been? Oh, all my videos are always 19 minutes and I always want them to be short. 
Bye, guys. I love you.